It is absolutely sodden wet. I'm glad our combine's not getting serviced today. Good morning, filling up creek feeders. We've just had a lorry in, dropping off a big old digger. Machinery arriving left, right and centre. So I presume that means today they're starting to rip this down. We don't really get exact dates. It's There's a deadline and it'll happen by that deadline. I found some ragwort. This stuff for cattle, it's pretty bad. I mean, it attacks the liver and they lose a lot of weight and they can get swollen and bottle jaw and various bits and bobs. Nasty stuff for them. I'm not sure if it can kill them. Can it? This, uh, one of our delivery vans for eggs. It's getting traded in today and new one's on the way. It's done 170, 80,000 miles. It's just having bother and it's going to cost too much to get sorted. So we're buying a new van and we're trading that one in for it. I'm away to pick up gas for the welder. So I can finish that bell grab over there, which I started repairing two months ago. New bottle. That's where I get my gas, DNA factors. I just pay for a refill. There's different ways you can do your gas. I just pay as I fill it up, whereas you can actually rent bottles for the year. And does that mean you fill it up for free? But that suits more if you're welding a lot. The reason this bottle is empty is because all the gas had leaked, not because I'd used it all. So I've got some soapy water to try and find some leaks. And I have found one. See the bubbles there? That's why my previous gas bottle emptied itself. I've not checked all the other joints, but this is one of them. I think we're good on this one now. Yeah. Right, this crack here, need to get that pressed in. I need to clean it up, press it in, weld it all down there, weld around the seams, clean it up first. Sledgehammer, I need to square this up. The clamps just keep slipping off, so I'm just gonna give it a bash with a hammer. We're getting there, just trying to line these holes up. I'm not miles off right now. You can see the middle, the bracket just needs to go down to the left a touch. Here's the new van, it's arrived, nice and shiny. So we look inside. I think it's done 30, no, 50,000 miles. We'll get some eggs in there. Oh, nice new floor. It's been refloored. There's a bit at the back, I'm going to fill in that little bit. And we're off. This is one of the pins that runs through there. And you can see it's fairly worn out there. So I'm gonna build that up weld, grind it back, and hopefully flush enough. It's pretty much bang on where it needs to be, but it's not perfect. I think the actual whole frame is slightly bowed. A little bit rough, but we'll grind it back. No one will know, apart from everyone watching right now. I started off there, my gas wasn't on. Nice one. Anyway, I'll just get that ground back. The only thing I'm concerned about, um, I realized halfway through welding that is I should have preheated these because I'm welding basically just on the one side. So it's gonna want to bend that rod. They're not straight anyway. They've been a wee bit bent from um, being in the actual grab, but it's not gonna help it. What I'm gonna do, chuck it in my lathe, which is a project which I haven't finished, so it doesn't run, but it gives me something to hopefully hold on to it. Quick. I wish I had a working lace. There's issues with the motor. I had it running once upon a time, and then the capacitor 
down here. Is it that one that blew up? No, it's a different one. It went everywhere. It went <laughs> huge puff of smoke. So I need to take that motor somewhere to get looked at. The Sparky came and looked at that two years ago and said, yeah, it's a good motor, take it somewhere to get sorted. Um, and that was two years ago and I haven't got back to it. Saying that, I could probably just spin that by hand and just keep the grinder on there. I'll use a flat disc so it's not really aggressive on it. How much simpler this would be if the lace actually worked and more accurate. It's not perfect, but I'll take it. Nice. Right, it's not perfect, but it's a whole heck of a lot better than it used to be. There's no divots in it anymore. I need to get myself into the way of wearing gloves, especially working with hydraulic fluid. Hydraulic oil is really quite bad for you. It breaks down organic tissue, like it can basically break down the tissue in your hands and get into your bloodstream and it's carcinogenic. So all the badness, need to start doing that. And anyone out there who is, just ends up getting their hands all grubby and covered in stuff, I've just cleaned them, wear gloves. Someone might call you a wet wipe, but you might live to 90, they might not. Right now, I'm gonna order some gloves, so I actually do it. Order gloves. Right, done, it's a bit, that's the best bit. It was a bit rougher in places, but hopefully it'll not go anywhere. And the reason it broke is because it was handling silage bales and it's really designed for straw bales. The silage weighs a lot more and it's a lot harsher on it. Well, I'll assemble it all back together. The two pins, they're done. I've redone those bits so they're relatively round. The wear points are filled in anyway. So you can put those pins back in, put it all back together and use it once or twice and it'll break again. First bit of welding actually I've really done with this new machine, Artec. They give me a nice discount by the way. They give me basically like 40% off or so, just cause I'm showing it on the channel. So that was very nice of them. But yeah, first time I've used it and seems to do a decent job. Spits out the weld. It's not got a very good operator on the end of it. So that probably won't help. I'm not gonna be biased about it so far. Done a decent job. I don't think you'd get out of that the same you would like a Lincoln or a Miller in terms of quality and longevity, but I was quite happy to go with it. And um, seems to be getting on well with it. That's three years warranty on it as well, so definitely a step up from my old machine. You probably heard Betty whining in the background of those clips. I put her right at the back of the workshop so she couldn't see the welding that was going on. It's bad for eyes, not just human animals as well. I love painting stuff just after you've welded it. So it's like, it dries so quickly. And it probably means the paint's rubbish on it, but it's not gonna matter on that. I've got some GCB yellow kicking about somewhere. Right, we're ready to go back together. Just need to put all the pieces of the jugs, jigs, that, that. All the pieces are somewhat back to decent condition. Found the yellow. Oh, that was meant to land on the hammer. Subscribe if you're not already. Good news, the pin went in pretty easily. So I must have welded that bracket fairly square. I just need to rotate it a tiny bit so that lines up with this hole. Boat goes through there to hold the pin in place.
go a bit bigger there. Let's cut these a bit shorter. Never forget to loop the shaft. Whee, that's a lot better. my old friend I've come to talk with you again pretty much done just need to put the headstock back on but that'll take two minutes cue come alive Foo Fighters music Job's almost done, there's a oil pipe that's on it. One of the oil lines is leaking, so I need to get that repaired. Otherwise, it's pretty much back together. Just in time for harvest, which is around the corner. I'm shifting bales. We've got two of those grabs. One of them's still working, but we need them at uh, both ends of the trailer, basically. The trailer picks them up in the field and then needs to be taken off at the other end. Next stop, um, well, I can't tell you about the next stop, actually, this afternoon. Sheep guys are in, they've set up hurdles in here into this little paddock which is empty now. It has begun demolition. Yeah, there's a couple of lean-tos, one here, one around the corner, so they've been wiped out. The uprights that they were on, and um, these have been cut and we're actually gonna reuse them because we've got a new bit we need to build with them. I'll show you in a second, but there's a wall coming down we need to replace. So here's all the uprights we need to keep. So there's actually a fair bit in them. We need eight of them, and then the rest of that, we could probably end up using them for strainers or anything like that, so. That's fine, we'll keep that. That's a big pile of scrap which will grow steadily over the next few days. That can just get burnt, they're old pallets and old plyboard sheets. Right, I'm gonna snap my fingers and we'll be off to the races. Slightly different view out of the shed now. Um, so there used to be, that used to be a hard wall, well, sheeted wall, which there's all the sheets. And then there used to be a lean-to hanging off of there. So lean to is all gone. More of those uprights, which are the same uprights we've kept. There's obviously a bit of water. There used to be a trough here. So that is a live water pipe. Creased over for now. The water is needing change. Basically, the mains comes in over there. And then it, there's some comes over here. Some goes up that way. We'll need to divert all that once this is all dealt with. But a good day one's progress. A few lean twos wiped out. Progress, here we go. I'm excited. There's Gate Lady inspecting what's going on. Scrappy's coming here. Um, to deal with it all himself, so we're not having to take it to a scrapyard or anything like that. Those buckets make the wee bucket on the eight tonner look like a little midget thing. Let's see her in action. Shut your own gates. <laughs> it's going up and a half. <laughs> <laughs> 